Is communication as simple as peering into the brain? Technology can play a huge role in helping us to communicate because our abilities, though tremendous as human beings, are nevertheless limited. Billions are spent each year in the judicial system searching for truth. Not always successfully. Now, a new technology threatens to expose every liar on the planet. Okay, Sharice, this headband will pick up the electrical signals from the brain. As you can see, there are electrodes embedded in the headband. These will pick up your brain signals from three different parts of your brain. And also... Dr. Lawrence Farwell is a neuroscientist from Iowa. His invention is a machine that's capable of scientifically determining deception. A suspect's ability to deceive is short-circuited because normal interrogation methods are bypassed. The brain communicates its innermost secrets directly to the computer, no matter how poker-faced you may be. The technology is called brain fingerprinting. Brain fingerprinting doesn't detect lies or truth. It doesn't detect guilt or innocence. What brain fingerprinting detects is information stored in the brain. The question we ask is, does this subject have the details about, say, a crime stored in his brain or not? And that's the question that we can answer scientifically with brain fingerprinting. Brain fingerprinting is infallible because it directly reads brain activity. When shown specific details about a crime, if the accused is innocent, the brain will have no knowledge of the event and show no activity. If the accused is guilty, the brain will respond, even if the accused denies the crime. We're running a test of Sharice's brain waves, and this screen illustrates the brain wave responses as they're taking place. Dr. Farwell is measuring responses from a subject accused of a crime. In this simulation, it's his assistant. Her only interaction is with the computer. She records a simple yes or no with the click of a mouse if she recognizes a key word or phrase displayed on the screen. Among those stimuli that she's pushing the don't recognize button, some of them are relevant to the crime. So if the actual perpetrator was pushing that don't recognize button, his thumb would be saying, no, I don't recognize it. But his brain would say, aha, yes, that's the murder weapon, or that's where the body was found, or other information about the crime. So we would pick up from his brain something different from what he was overtly telling us with his button presses, or what he would be overtly telling us if we interviewed him about the subject. In other words, your brain either has the knowledge or it doesn't. The result? is unequivocal. We have a mathematical algorithm that analyzes the brain waves and comes up with a determination of information present or information absent. Either the information stored in the brain matches that crime scene or it doesn't. I consent to participate in Farwell Brain Fingerprinting as a free and voluntary act. This agreement brain fingerprinting has been a rare but powerful tool in the quest for justice. Understand that? In August 1999, Dr. Farwell was invited by local authorities to brain fingerprint James B. Grinder. He had been a prime suspect in the murder of a woman in Mason, Missouri, 15 years earlier. This elevated blue line indicates Grinder's response to the specific details of the murder. For example, some of the wounds on the body would be known only to the, the perpetrator, where the body was specifically, some of the items that were found at the scene of the crime, other items that were thrown out of a car near the scene of the crime. Those would be known to the perpetrators and to investigators, but not to someone who wasn't there. Well, J.B. Grinder knew those details. Some of these are the names of people involved in the crime, victim and perpetrators. You ready to go again? Yeah. Okay, here it goes. Following Dr. Farwell's results, Grinder faced almost certain conviction and a probable death sentence. One week after the brain fingerprinting test, Grinder pled guilty in exchange for life in prison and also then confessed to three other murders of young women. So this is one case where brain fingerprinting caught a serial killer and put him in prison where he belongs. 
It's not just criminals who'll face the brain fingerprinting test. We can detect an Al-Qaeda-trained terrorist who's been through Al-Qaeda training. We can tell the difference between a, a terrorist and an innocent Afghani student. So not only can we detect whether someone's committed a specific crime, but we can also detect whether somebody's had a specific kind of training, or whether they've been involved in the planning of a terrorist act or training for terrorist acts. As a high-tech method of detecting major crime and terrorist deception, the brain fingerprint is foolproof.